All right, this time we're gonna go over how to graph and linearize your data using Desmos and then use that slope of your linearization to get a piece of information about your physical situation. So first you're just gonna to go to desmos.com. Hit start graphing, you can make an account. I think I'm already logged in, but if you this is the first time you use it, you might wanna make an account. So the first thing you notice we have a blank graph, nothing on it and just kind of blank side over here. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna put some data in here. So I'm gonna hit the plus and add a table. And I'm gonna rename my column headers here so they match what we did. So this this data comes from a, a lab where you were rolling something down the hill and seeing how it's positioned in time or related to each other. So I'm going to use for my X variable time, I'm gonna call it T1. And for my Y axis variable, I'm gonna use position. So I'm gonna call that X. Now I'm just gonna type in the values that I recorded. Let's see, I got 42, 2.03. 0 0.49, 2.79, 3.11, and 3.41. And this is at 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 120 centimeters. Now, right now you notice nothing happened over here. There's no graph. And that's because um, the scale here is not correct. So I'm going to go click this way up in the right, right hand corner as a wrench. And I'm going to change my x-axis. I'm going to have it go from actually negative 1 to, let's see, my time values go up to about 3.4. So I'm going to have it go from negative 1 to 4. And my y, I'm going to have it go from negative 1. And the reason I'm putting negative just so I can see the 0 part. If I put it right from 0, the 0 will be kind of squished. And I'm going to go up to, let's see, it goes up to 120. I'm going to go up to, let's say, 130. And now if I close that, now I can see my data points. Now I'm going to add one more point. I'm going to add the point in zero, zero. And I'll sh you'll see in a second why I'm going to add this. Let me move this in. The other thing with Desmos, once you graph, you can kind of drag your graph around and move it around if you want. So there's my data points, those green dots. And my next step is going to be to try to figure out what type of relationship this is. And for that, I'm going to look, take a look at my types of relationship document here and mainly look at the different shapes of the curves on the bottom and if I look at that it looks like it kind of starts at zero and curves up that looks let's see it's not going to be a linear because it's not straight the inverse the inverse square and the inverse root all curve down I don't want that no relation is just horizontal that's not that so it looks like it could either be the root and the square function both go up but mine curves up and the only one that does that is the square function so that tells me that if I look up here that my relationship is going to be something of the form my y variable equals some constant times my x variable squared. So the way you kind of check that in Desmos is you just kind of you can click below it or you can go plus and add a expression if you want. I'm just going to click there's a little teeny tiny two right there. I'm just going to click there. I'm going to put that. Now I'm not going to type y. I'm going to type my y variable. So that's x1, and it'll automatically throw the subscript down there for you. And I'm not going to put equals. I'm going to put the uh, tilde, this little kind of squiggly line thing. And that's how you tell Desmos you want to figure things out for you. So I'm going to say x1 equals some constant. Um, let's just call it, I don't know, we can call it c for now, Ta times my x variable, which is t1. And that's if it was linear. And we can definitely see that linear function doesn't fit. And now I'm going to square that. So I'm going to hit the up caret. That's shift 6. And then two. So there's my function for um, a square function, where my position is equal to some constant times my time squared. And if I look at this, that fits pretty well. I'm a couple dots are off, but I mean for for a lab that was just done using a stopwatch or something rolling down a hill, not very far, that fits pretty well. So there's so the problem though is two problems. One is this is kind of a guess, maybe it's not perfect. The second is, okay, this gave me my constant, it gave me the C constant of 10.2, but if I didn't have a computer, I wouldn't be able to figure that out for a curve. So what I wanna do is I wanna linearize this and I wanna create a new graph that has, a, that is a straight line that has a linear relationship and then when I look at that, I can really see the relationship between my two variables and I can actually find the slope myself and get some of these constants. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to make a new table and I'm going to keep my x variable or uh, yeah keep my x variable so but I'm going to call it x2 instead 
and I'm going to call it T2 and X2. So T2 over here and X2 over here. And my X1 is going to keep exactly the same. So I'm going to go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. I'm going to use 0 again. And now what I'm going to do for my T variable is I'm not going to just type in another time. I'm going to type in this variable is actually going to be equal to time squared. Now the weird thing is you can't really, it's hard to type that in here. It's actually, let me see if it will yell at me or not. Yeah, so it kind of yells at me. It doesn't like that as a variable. It wants just a regular variable name. So you kind of have to call it a its own little name. So I'm going to say that um, T2 is really equal to, or let's call it Z2. So I'm going to say Z2 is a new variable I made up. I don't know why that's there. there. Z2 is a new variable I made up that's going to be equal to my time variable up here, but squared. And so I'm going to rep I want to replot position versus time squared. And if my relationship up here, up here is correct, if time squared or time one squared is really my, that whole thing is my new variable, well, this equation then becomes it's of the form like y equals mx. So it ends up being the equation of a line. So I'm just going to take all of my time values up here and I'm going to square them. So it's going to give me about 2.02. .02. 4.12, 6.2, 7.78, 9 9.67, 11.6, and then zero squared is just zero. And you notice I got a second set of data here. And in Desmos, if you have a couple graphs, you want to turn one off. See these little circles that are kind of colored? If I click that, all those green dots go away. If I click this, that black function goes away. Um, now all I have to do is I have to rescale my data. I'm going to keep my y axis going to 120, but now I want my x axis to cover all these times squared things. So I'm going to go back up here and change my x axis to go up to 12. And now I can really see my data. Let's move over a little bit. There are my points. It looks pretty linear. Let me do a check now. So I'm going to go back, type in a new function. I'm going to say my uh, y variable, which is really x. So x2 tilde. And I'm going to use a new constant this time. I'm going to call it m. Is really m times z2. And now it's going to try to fit a curve to that. And that linear curve fits pretty well. I got a couple above. I got a couple below. A couple almost on it. It fits really nice. And now it actually gives me my slope down here. So there is that 10.2 value I got up there. It's the same value because it's the same type of graph. But the good thing about linearizing stuff is now that I can really see because this is linear, that this relationship is true. That x is equal to some constant times z, where z, I just, again, z here stands for times squared. And also, if I did this by hand, I could actually find the slope of this pretty easily by just doing rise over run. And um, in this case, too, since this is this is data for a ball rolling down a hill, actually, I, I'm, um, if you, depending on when you watch this video, you might have learned in your class that when you plot position time data for something that's accelerating down a hill, when you linearize it, the slope of the line actually ends up being half of the acceleration. So it looks like in this case, the acceleration of my object is about 20 centimeters per second squared.